Hello and welcome to a quick introduction to the relational audit, what it is and why we use it here at the LGA within our bespoke support to health and care systems, including our peer review programmes. The relational audit, also known as relational value assessment, was created by Whole Systems Partnership and is a short online survey that measures the quality of relationships across a system, so it transgresses those traditional organisational boundaries. It is an objective way of measuring the strength of relationships, not just at a system leadership level, but across all sectors and all staff groups. So basically, the more people that fill it out, the greater benefit you'll get from the insights it generates. So this is not your typical staff survey, but a real opportunity to measure the culture and behaviour within a system. It's a fantastic tool designed to help identify where and why relationships are strong and where there may be opportunities to improve collaborative working arrangements. And finally, it's rooted in science. WSP have worked closely with Leeds University and others to develop the survey, and it's become a much celebrated, well-respected tool and is used widely throughout the UK and not just within health and care. So why do we use it? We all know that relationships are key, and this has become even more apparent during COVID. And although I've already mentioned it, it is worth repeating that this audit does provide a unique insight into the quality of relationships between organisations and has a potential to capture and collate the views of a significant number of people living and working within your local health and care system. It's a tool, not a judgement. We use this in our improvement support, including peer reviews, just, just to help guide the conversations and to support systems to think about areas for improvement. We do not use it to make a judgement and we do not publish, public, publish the results. And it's up to systems what they do with the output report afterwards. So the output report, which you'll see shortly, helps to highlight the key themes and the peers will use this, um, use these to help facilitate conversations and focus focus groups locally to explore and unpick those areas which may be a barrier to effective partnership working. So essentially it's a conversation starter and a way to test perceptions. It's also a powerful way to illustrate a journey system partners have been on together. We tend to undertake the relational order at step before a peer review or some bespoke support, but there's also then the potential to complete one at a defined period, say three, six, 12 months later to show the progression and, and where there have been changes in, in how relationships feel to those on the ground. Um, some areas that we've supported continue to use a survey questions as a touch point at regular intervals to great effect. And finally, and last but not least, it is time efficient. We recognise the pressure that everyone's under at the moment and how valuable time is. This is a 10 minute survey and it really can be completed in that time. So respondents are asked to think about the degree to which these statements on the right reflect their experience of living and working within a local system. The choice of responses are consistently true, mostly often, sometimes, rarely, consistently not true. Not applicable is not an option, as these statements should all be applicable to anyone living and working within a local health and care system. The survey does collect some demographic intelligence, such as the type of organisation the respondent works in, um, the type of role they're in, the length of time that they've worked there, and that is, again just to gather some, some further nuances to the responses. There's also the opportunity for free text comments to enable some qualitative feedback, and that's not to comment on the survey itself, but for, for respondents to perhaps expand on or explain why they've answered um, answered the, the questions in a particular way. So it's completed using an online tool um, which is disseminated by yourself. The responses are all anonym anonymised. Um, uh, it's an automated report which is analysed by WSP. And then the end product is this. So this survey here is just for illustrative purposes only um, and a real one would include the free text comments to sit alongside the data. And I'm not going to go into the science behind it, but if you do want to know more, please use um, the reading materials listed earlier or get in touch with us. So these numbers here out of five correspond to the relational value against the five attributes to effective system working evidenced by a set of behaviours. And these attributes, which are consistent across, across the audit, um, any audit completed, is system integrity, so how things interconnect and function and all pulling together, respect, so how we treat each other and recognise everyone's contributions, fairness, how equity is achieved, empathy, how we understand each other, and trust, how much we put ourselves in other people's hands. 
And the relational value, so that number, is a product arising from a consistent pattern of behaviours and is something that exists between individuals, groups and organisations and is therefore a feature of the system, not just the constituent parts. So this is just to reiterate, this is not about within organisations, but between organisations or groups. The relational value can support or hinder the achievement of the purpose for which the relationship has come into existence. So put simply, this could be about implementing population health and management approaches, the degree um, to which the successful embedding of a home first discharge to assess model, or how um, the degree to which um, a health and wellbeing board has delivered on its prevention of priorities, for example. So this just demonstrates how relevant the tool can be to many of our support offers and, and to you. So here you have here the overall average score, which is 2.5 out of 5. And so there are some areas for improvement. The report identifies below the strongest attribute, which is empathy, the weakest, which is around respect, and the one where there was the most where there was dissonance or a lack of agreement, which was empathy. You then have a heat map at the bottom here on the left, to helpfully draw the eye with red being the weakest, working through brown up to bright green for the strongest. If we then jump across to the right hand side and the six boxes here to the right, it shows it shows it draws out the highest scores and lowest scores from the heat map and the colour of the box on the scale shows whether it's the greatest level of agreement, which is in blue or disagreement, which is white. So if we take trust, for example, which is the bright red score here, this achieved the lowest score overall. The blue box demonstrates there was a high level of agreement or similarity in experience amongst respondents. And the width of the blue box shows there wasn't a huge range to the score. This may lead leaders to think about what they can do to empower staff and to review their process and ways of working that enable colleagues and frontline staff to make choices based on the needs of the system rather than individual organisations. And finally, the polar chart in the top right hand corner can help to identify if there is a particular cohort or sector that may feel differently or where some targeted work may be needed. In this case, local government other disagree the most with other groups, given that their scores for the five attributes are compacted closer to the centre, whereas for others, empathy, for example, is closer to the edge. So that's the report and now how to disseminate it successfully. So as we've mentioned before, the, this is not just aimed at leaders within health and care, but people at all levels and across all types of organisations, so not just statutory organisations. So the more people that complete it, the better the output report is going to be. So don't cherry pick. Give, this, give anyone the opportunity to complete it. Make use of staff bulletins, newsletters, network events, um, can, networks that you may have locally. In terms of the actual completion itself, beware of organisational firewalls, which can sometimes restrict the ability to which um, the degree to which it can be completed. So make sure you use the most up to date Internet browser and potentially use a personal device. And finally, complete it in one sitting. Don't click away from the window or refresh the page. So that's the relational audit in a nutshell. If you want more information around our support offers, please do visit our website or email us at integration at local.gov.uk where you can find a full list of all the support offers we have available and, the, and different support programmes.